and welcome to this video, which is all about how to make money blogging for beginners. <laughs> so maybe you're completely new to, be, to blogging. Maybe you have a blog, but you didn't have much success with it. Well, today I am going to go over the practical and technical steps of what it takes to click and start your very first blog and also the overall steps that you need to take for your blog to increase in traffic, to be served in the search engines very visibly in the top. And as a result, you know, the, those things can earn you money as long as you implement a monetization method. So let's just jump right in. So the first step, in, you know, deciding and setting up your first blog, the first decision you really need to make is choose your blog or niche site topic. Okay. So if you have a blog and it is niched down or it has one topic or theme, it's going to end up doing a lot better and a lot faster in the search engines because you are talking about this one topic overall. And search engines like Google look on that favorably. So to start a successful blog, you need to determine what topic or niche you want to focus on. Consider something you love or are passionate about and something you can talk and research about for a long time. And there's, there's a good reason for that. If you're passionate about something, or, you know, if something is a hobby of yours and you just, you, you love it, right? It's your hobby. The thing is, you're going to already know information about it. It's going to cut down on your research time. If you're going to write articles every week, right? That, that could add up to a significant time that you can save when you don't have to research. But also it plays into um, Google's thing that it looks on very favorably. And that thing is called EAT. EAT stands for expertise, experience, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. And your blog needs to be exuding those qualities. And it, it's a topic in its own. But what I want to touch on is that Google wants to serve blogs in its search engine to its users that are by people who are experienced in their topic that they're talking about. So if this is, if something is your passion or hobby, I recommend that you start your blog in that, you know, topic. So you have to choose your blog or new site topic. That's step one. Step two, research how to monetize your blog. There are so many monetization methods from ads to sponsored posts to affiliate marketing. If those are foreign terms for you, I have a video coming up that is all about that in itself. So that should give you a lot of light into how you can monetize your blog. But this is just a research phase. So what you can do is you can research other successful blogs in your niche or overall topic and see like what they're doing on their blogs. Do they have display ads, their own products or reviews? Are they referring to affiliate products? So you can take a look. And once you know that, you know, other people are doing this in your niche, now you have a better idea of how to monetize your site. And also you can tell how many monetization methods exist, right? So that was step two, research how to monetize your blog. Step three, choose a domain name. Okay, so you can choose whatever domain name you want, right? It Mine could be moon.com, right? Or it could be... If, if I was going to have a techie blog, like that discusses laptop reviews or something like, maybe I would have named it moonslaptops.com or moonloveslaptops.com. You spend a little bit of time and choose something you're going to love. And I like, I like a little bit of branded 
which is like moon, and a little bit of what the topic is, because that could help people remember your domain name, that which is the name of your site. That's an exciting part of, you know, setting up your blog. Um, make it simple, memorable, and relevant to your blog's niche. And I tend to stick to dot coms. Once in a rare while, I will go with a dot net. They can all rank very well. There's so many extensions you can buy them with, but I'd like to stick to dot com because it's just such a standard to have that. Now, once you have selected your domain name, before you register it, before you do that, step four is to check and then register social media accounts. So, you know, Affiliate Phoenix, which is how you, you know me, is my domain name. But before I registered it, I made sure that there weren't any other social media accounts that I was going to have to compete with on a major level. Now, you might be like, but Moon, I'm not going to be making videos or this or that. Thing is, you don't know what you'll be doing in the future, right? And you sure as heck don't want to give your social media accounts to someone else. So even if they're taken, you can still decide if that's okay or not, right? If somebody else had a YouTube channel with the name Affiliate Phoenix, and they had like 10,000 subscribers, I probably would have gone with another name. So, you know, choose your domain name. Step four is check and then register your social media accounts and then go ahead and register your domain name. So I guess they could be the same step or whatever. Okay, step five is choosing a hosting company and setting up your WordPress blog, okay? So just to break it down a little bit, a hosting company hosts your website's files. So what that means is that when people, you know, try to read an article on your page, right, or they click on a link or whatever, the page needs to be served to that person. Well, your hosting company is where your website's files live okay and so you need to choose a a decent hosting company like when you're starting off right and you don't have any traffic you can go with most of the cheaper hosting companies i i've been using namecheap without a problem for a few months now if you don't know where to start you can go with namecheap it's a popular choice as well and yeah just go for a shared hosting plan. And then when you have tons of traffic, you can always upgrade to a better hosting plan for your site. Now, that's how you set up your blog. <clears throat> I'm beginning to sound robotic. <clears throat> now, this part is what is going to bring a lot of free traffic to your blog. What you can do is learn and apply keyword research. That is step, I don't even know what step it is at this point. Step six, <laughs> step six, my notes were wrong. So learn and apply keyword research. What is a keyword to begin with? Okay, a keyword is anything that a person types into a search engine like Google when they're looking up information, right? It could be, what is Affiliate Phoenix? Or um, you could be looking up things like, why are orange tabbies so naughty? <laughs> That's a joke because I actually have two orange tabbies and they give me heart attacks every day getting into things. But anyways, so keyword or a key phrase they can, these two words can be used anonymously. So let's, let's take an example here. If your site is about sewing, right? Maybe it's moon loves sewing, right? If I started it, then you will want to do keyword research and find out what kind of 
things or phrases people are typing into Google related to sewing that you can answer on your blog. Maybe you could discover that people are searching for key phrases like how to sew a scarf or sewing a scarf for beginners or best sewing machines under $500 and so much more. So you can, there are free tools, there are paid tools you can use to do keyword research. So once you find your keyword, then you can craft content around it and optimize your article for that keyword. Now, when you optimize your article for a particular keyword, what Google does is if the content is great, if you've applied and, and this will be uh, coming up soon, if, if you've optimized your key phrases, it gives it a much better chance of showing up in, in the top spots in Google, right? And so when it shows up in the top, people click on it and they end up on your blog. You can always make a list of those keywords or key phrases and then have a plan over the next few weeks about, you know, what articles are coming out and you'll be crafting content around those keywords. Step seven. Start creating high quality content. I kind of said that in the last step, we covered that, but once you have your list of keywords, then you can start creating one article per keyword. Okay. And the idea here is to create, uh, I've called it high quality content, right? But what makes content high quality? Just make sure that whatever keyword you choose, you're answering that, you're, you're creating content for that keyword to the best of your ability. Meaning, you know, if, if it's something like, uh, what was one of the keywords I just mentioned, let's say how to sew a scarf, right? So maybe that article would be better served with not just a text article, but also you could include very detailed images throughout that post, right? Because seeing is like, it helps beginners learn, you know, easier than just reading something. So as long as you're researching and writing your own posts and, you know, the content is unique, informative, engaging, and relevant to your niche, you're doing a great job. So start creating high quality content. Okay, next step is optimize your blog for search engines. So what do I mean by optimize your blog? Remember that keyword you chose for your article? What you can do is you can learn on-page SEO. SEO stands for search engine optimization, which really is a fancy way of saying optimize your article so it can show up in a search engine like Google. That's all that means, right? When you optimize your articles for the search engines, it will help your content reach a wider audience, okay? Um, use relevant keywords to your overall topic and make sure that you apply on-page SEO factors. And if you don't know what they are, that is okay. You can learn, they're not, it's not rocket science and you will learn that in, in order of things. So, okay, next step, promote your blog. So you can promote your articles through any social media accounts that are yours. It, they can be personal accounts, whether it's on Facebook, Twitter, I don't even know what else. So you can promote your blog through any means you want, right? So the more you network with other bloggers as well, the more opportunities open up to, and they can promote your blog, you can promote their blog, right? So make sure you do that as well. I believe we are at seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. My numbers are off. <laughs> okay, so... The last step, and this is the essential step in making money from your blog. So, you know, let's say that you've published 20, 30 articles 
you know, then it's time to kind of slow down and learn how you can monetize your blog. Depending on how much traffic you have, you can do display ads, which you might have seen on some sites. You can recommend affiliate products, which all it, all that means is that you can promote a certain product, like companies will pay you a commission for promoting their products. So where it makes sense in your articles, you can recommend those products. And, you know, if it's relevant, right, which it should be, your people who are reading your blog, some of them are going to need or want those products. So they'll click on your link and you can earn a commission. Well, you can do things like create your own ebook, sell merchandise, right? There's, there's a lot of things you can do, but the key part here is more you create and publish search engine optimized content and share it with your audience, the more traffic over time you will get to your blog, right? So it becomes a numbers game. And the more people that are on your blog, some of those people are going to be clicking on those ads or those affiliate products or buying your ebook, however you've monetized your blog. The point being is that the more you publish, the more chances that your blog's going to grow over time. The more people that land on your page, on, on your blog, the more chances or there, there's more potential of you to earn more revenue. That's, that's how you really make money from your blog. So this is the last step. Step 11, stay consistent and keep learning. Okay, so if you're super new to blogging, it can feel overwhelming. There's technical steps to learn. There's on-page SEO, which I mentioned. But you know, you, you take it one step at a time. You learn something new every week. The main thing to remember is that without, if you're not keeping up with the content and your blog isn't growing, right? Google's not going to just reward you for having five total posts on your blog, right? There's tons of other blogs that are bigger, that are that have quality content, right? So for you to have a great chance and making money from your blog, you really need to take it like you need to treat it like a business. You need to show up every day and, and be involved in the creation process, right? In the, in the content process. So as long as you're publishing new content and you have a healthy schedule for that, promoting your blog through your social media accounts and learning new ways to monetize and improving your blog. And, and that's how you get there over time. Congrats on making through this video. I know it was a little bit long, but I didn't want to skip over anything important because how to make money from your blog, um, it, it's essential for you to understand the overall process. With that said, making money from your blog isn't hard as long as you commit to the process. Now, please hit like or subscribe to my channel or do both. <laughs> That'll be great. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them below.